Hello, my name is Karen Lothrop. I'm CEO of Hillholt Wood, a rural environmental social enterprise in the UK, and I'm also a board uh, member for Social Enterprise UK. I get asked a lot about my journey to social enterprise because I think not everybody wakes up and are born a social entrepreneur and for me it was a real learning curve. Mm -hmm. Prior to going into social enterprise I worked in the field of communications and administration with large multinational companies, mm -hmm. laterally a big pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. And pharmaceutical companies, as big organisations all do, work to the bottom line. Mm -hmm. They work to their financial bottom line. Mm -hmm. So the more profits they can make, the happier they are and the happier their shareholders are. Mm -hmm. That was it. Mm -hmm. And then I met a man who upset that whole status quo. Mm -hmm. I met an Englishman on a blind date. I don't know whether you're familiar with blind dates. Yeah, yeah. It's where you go <laughs> on a party and your friend introduces you to somebody. And I was introduced to this chap called Nigel. And when I told him on the opening question, he asked me what I did. And I went off jauntily saying I did all of these wonderful things. He was so unimpressed. Mm -hmm. And I got a bit of a shock and I asked him why. And he said it was because I was only looking at the bottom line. I was only looking at financial gain. Mm -hmm. And why didn't I look to my social and my environmental missions as well. Mm. Well, that stopped me in my tracks. And he started to talk to me and I asked him what he did. And he said, it's not what I've done, it's what I'm going to do that matters. I'm going to buy a forest. Oh, I said, yeah. can you? So I think it's really important sometimes when you're looking at social enterprises mm. or looking at social entrepreneurship. Yes, there's a group of people who are naturally innovative mm. and natural vision seekers. Mm. But then there are people like me who are really good co-preneurs, mm -hmm. people that might not have come up with the idea mm. just at the beginning, but who can add their skill and their weight behind that to make it a reality. Mm -hmm. So John Lennon from the Beatles, the group the Beatles, used to say that if you dream on your own, it remains a dream. If you dream with others, it becomes a reality. Mm -hmm. So why did we, why did Nigel want to buy a forest or a wood? Well, in the UK, he felt that they were government um, run really the, the forests that were run very well by the Forestry Commission but it only had mono use mm -hmm. people were walking their dogs mm -hmm. or taking walks and he felt it should be a living wood so he wanted to prove the value of woodland in the 21st century mm -hmm. by setting up a social enterprise business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the big question people ask us is, why on earth did you choose a wood? Well, the simple answer to that is that it was the co-founder's passion. Mm -hmm. And you start with something that you're passionate about and that you know about. So the co-founder, Nigel, is a biologist. He spent two years living in the Antarctic as a senior biologist. He's been all over the world looking at woodlands and forestry. Mm -hmm. And that was his passion. But of course, it doesn't stop within the woodland. You know the saying, you can't see the wood for the trees. So you have to go outside. So I'm delighted to say that Hill Old Wood has been replicated in a farm, in inner city, and that's been really, really rewarding for us. So a farm who has, has to look for diversification because they can't make enough income out of their farming, mm -hmm. now have set up a little school with youngsters who are really interested in equitation horse management as a future. And they apply the same principles that we do in the woodland, but it's in a farm. Mm. It's about getting local councils who manage woodland mm -hmm. and have to get contractors in to manage that woodland. Mm -hmm. We'll set up social enterprises to manage it. They will manage it far more efficiently and with a greater impact, social impact, than any private company could. Mm -hmm. Um, now, just trying to make money chopping down trees and selling wood is not going to work. This is not a viable proposition. Mm -hmm. And that's where the social entrepreneurship is, comes in. It's looking what needs your local community has and how you react to them. Mm -hmm. So one of the main sources of income we have is through education. Mm -hmm. We have a high rate of unemployment for 16 to 19 year olds in the UK and it's rising. Part of the problem is that a lot of our young men do not fit into mainstream schooling. They find it boring, they find that they want to get out and get a job, and they find it quite difficult. We're living in a very challenging world. We're living in a world that really wants to see outputs but not outcomes. 
So education has been driven by outputs. Mm. We have a school at Hillholt Wood and we heard an amazing speaker this morning at the conference here at the Lamarck Hotel with the TSEU and he spoke about the bamboo school. Well, we've got a straw bale school. Our children build their classrooms from straw, from mud, from earth. But they then learn about work-based learning. Mm. They learn about the ethic of working, turning up to work, saying please and thank you, looking like you want to work. Mm. And that ignites them again and then they become a good citizen as well as a good student. So proving the value of woodland mm. is hugely important because um, A, we want, it's three strands, it's about educating the public about woodlands, yeah. about not just that the trees are immensely important to the environment and they have an income stream, stream in, the, in their own right. But in the UK, we don't build with British timber, we import British, we, we import timber to build with. We want to see that that has to change. Mm -hmm. We also want to prove that there are massive health benefits Mm -hmm. to being in a woodland. Mm -hmm. So we work very much with health and social care, mm -hmm. very much work with GPs on the green prescription. Mm -hmm. So when you go and you feel ill, mm -hmm. don't get a drug prescription, get a green prescription. Mm -hmm. Pay us, mm -hmm. give us an income, mm -hmm. pay us to give you some real good eco-therapies. Mm -hmm. That can be about doing good in the wood. Mm -hmm. We also have a design team an architectural practice, and that is about working with alternative methods of building, which is going to be so important to us with climate change and coming into the 21st century and building on, on, on that and on those, those risks that we face. Mm -hmm. So the income stream comes from education, it comes from events, mm -hmm. so we rent out our buildings for weddings and for parties, mm -hmm. massively important to the local community. Um, we give consultancy, it's an all-round package. The young people make products and they are then sold on. And people want to buy good products from good organisations. They want to know that their pound, their British pound, is going further. That when they trade with Hillholt Wood, they know that pound is going right back into the organisation to make it bigger and better. So there is a sustainability there. Mm -hmm. But mostly key to all of this is convincing your local authorities mm -hmm. and those people whom you have to procure the work from mm -hmm. that you are a good business, a good and a strong business. Mm -hmm. They will do business and trade with you. Not just because you're a good girl doing a lot of good. Mm -hmm. That's not what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. I'm a good businesswoman with an excellent business model with excellent customer service. Mm -hmm. And I want to be pitted up against the non-social entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. But when you go to, to procure the business, it's important to point out to the government mm -hmm. of the broader wins, mm -hmm. the added value that people get from trading with social enterprises. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's absolutely key. So we went from being a very small organisation of two or three people to an organisation now that has over 40 staff mm -hmm. full time. We're not one of the massively big by any stretch of the imagination social enterprises, but we always make a profit and that profit keeps our sustainability up for our social and our environmental missions. because. Most organisations look at your profit to see how well you're doing, don't they? You know, how good is your organisation doing? Let's have a look at your profits. Mm -hmm. Our profit lies in our social impact we have mm -hmm. with people and with communities. That's much harder to measure, isn't it? So in order to measure that, we do social audit accounting. And every two years, we get an external body, usually the university, to come in and do a social audit. Mm -hmm. Go and ask the stakeholders, how well are we doing? Ask the children, ask the people who are using our mental health services, mm -hmm. how well are you doing? You will get very good response from the individual. But what's key is beyond the individual, the impact we're making on that individual lives. Mm -hmm. The families are happier because the individual is happier. The NHS, the National Health Service, are happier because there's less people going to the doctor. Mm -hmm. The NHS is happier because there's less people going to seek psychiatric help, mm -hmm. which in turn leads to less prescriptions, mm -hmm. leads to less people being ill. Mm -hmm. So that's where the social impact comes. Mm -hmm. 
But for us, of course, it can be anecdotal. Is is 25 year olds turning up in the wood last week, mm -hmm. having been when they were 17, mm -hmm. having learned the lessons? They're still in employment. They've got a stable relationship. They've got a family. They're contributing to society. Mm -hmm. That's the win. So setting off on any kind of business, you're going to face many challenges. And setting out in social enterprise businesses, you may face more than most. Mm -hmm. And it's really important not to get disheartened mm -hmm. and not to go under the comforts or under the blankets, just to face that, that risk with adversity and to really be courageous about it. So some of the things we found very difficult was about getting our mission across to people, that we were serious about what we wanted to do, mm -hmm. serious about our business mission, but seriously about our social and environmental mission. Mm -hmm. When you tell people about your passion and that you want to change the world, they automatically think it's a bit airy-fairy mm -hmm. and, well, you'll get money, somebody will give you money because it's a good cause. Mm -hmm. It's when you start talking about the bottom line and that you're a strong business person, they kind of step back a little bit. So at the beginning, it was about changing people's perspective of who and what we were. So the first tip I would give any young social entrepreneur is get to know your market. Mm. Get to know your people and get them to understand your passion, mm. your mission. Be straight, be honest. Mm. Tell them a lot of it is aspirational and dream, but please dream with us. Mm. You can be part of this, but be straight with them. Mm. Have all your policies and procedures in a row. Uh, the majority of entrepreneurs, be they social or, or non-social entrepreneurs, are visionaries and thinkers. They don't do the doing. Mm. Always make sure that your business regime, your business management is robust. Mm -hmm. You know, have your insurances. Cash is still king. Mm. Make sure that you have the correct financial mm -hmm. facilities in place to manage your business. Mm. You know, it's really important because sometimes your heart can go away, run away with your mm -hmm. passion, mm -hmm. but your head must rule mm -hmm. when you're looking at your finance. Mm -hmm. And I would also give the tip of seeing is believing. Bring people into your world. Mm -hmm. We brought people into the wood. We showed them what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. We told them about our dreams mm -hmm. and they said, I think I want a part of this. Mm -hmm. And that's massively important.